know what exactly that is. Then he said, the Lord told him it's three things. Number one, in the Holy Ghost meeting, preached and or taught. So God's word always comes first. Now, does it mean in every session they'll be preaching and teaching? Not necessarily. There will be some sessions God may want us to do differently. But the word of God is given first place. Amen. Because you see, we are regulated by the word. And we are motivated by the Holy Ghost. God's word sets the boundaries for us. And God's word enables us to uh, know and to judge things accurately. And to stay steady. And to stay balanced. So God's word comes first. The word of God is preached and are taught typically about the person and work of the Holy Spirit or whatever else he wants taught. Secondly, in a Holy Ghost meeting, the Spirit of God is leading. He's guiding. He's in demonstration and in manifestation. The Spirit of God is leading, is guiding, is in demonstration and in manifestation. Now, it's a different kind of meeting. Yeah. You know, in a teaching meeting, you prepare line upon line, precept upon precept. You have an outline. You have notes. You have what you want to teach. In an evangelistic meeting, the thrust is to reach the lost and to get them saved. In a healing meeting, we're looking at ministering to the sick and getting them healed. In a worship service, the thrust is to worship God and to spend protracted time worshiping him. A prayer meeting, we come to pray. Then there's a believer's meeting. A believer's meeting and a Holy Ghost meeting are somewhat similar. Uh, a Holy Ghost meeting is like an advanced form of a believer's meeting. 1 Corinthians 14, 26, the Bible says, How is it then, brethren? When you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. It says, let all things be done unto edifying. So, in a believer's meeting, believers come together. Some may have a prophecy, some may have a message, some may have a revelation, something God told him and then there's a moderator or a leader who leads the meeting amen and moderates things thank god for that but a holy ghost meeting anything goes nothing cut and dried nothing you don't no two meetings may be the same you know you could get to one and we may just laugh from beginning to end for three hours for two hours just laughing we may come and we just dance without music, just inspired by the Holy Ghost. We may come and we may pray. We may come and we may worship. Just whatever the Spirit of God leads. But the Spirit of God is leading, is guiding, is in demonstration and in manifestation. Now we know there are manifestations of the Holy Ghost. We see them in 1 Corinthians 12, right? From verse 7 to 11, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man who profit with all. For to one, verse 8, is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing. Actually, in the Greek, both are, are plural. Gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, descending of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Verse 11 says, but all this worketh. That one and the self same spirit divide into every man severally as he will. So the spirit of God manifests himself in, the, uh, in Holy Ghost meetings. There are manifestations of the spirit. Now, of course, there's the spirit of God wheels, but it's an opportunity where we just allow the Holy Ghost to move. Whatever he wants to do, whatever manifestations he wants. And we know the purpose of those manifestations is to glorify Jesus, right? And to bring blessing to people. Amen. Praise God. And then the whole Spirit of God is leading, I said. He's guiding. He's in demonstration and in manifestation. There's what we also call demonstrations of the Spirit. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul, if you read from verse 1, he said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. He said, For I determined not to know anything among you except save Jesus Christ and him crucified said, and I was with you in fear and weakness and in much trembling. Verse 4 says, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So, he talked about 
demonstrations of the spirit and of power. What are demonstrations of the spirit? You see, a manifestation of the spirit could be a demonstration of the spirit. For instance, let's say we are teaching about gifts of the spirit. And then we now see them in operation to uh, 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 illustrate the teaching. Then that's a demonstration of the spirit. Amen. Notice talked about demonstration of the spirit and of power. Of power there could be talking about the power gifts of the spirit. Demonstrations of the spirit could be prophecy, could be tongues and interpretation, could be the word of knowledge, could be the word of wisdom, could be descending of spirits. So it includes the broad spectrum of gifts of the spirit. But not just that. You know, ministry gifts can also be a demonstration of the spirit. Remember in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1. The Bible says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Now, the word gifts is in italics, meaning it's not there in the original text. The original text actually says, now concerning spirituals, things often pertaining to the Holy Ghost. So, he then began to talk about those things often pertaining to the Holy Ghost. It starts by talking about manifestations of the Spirit from verse 3 to 11. Then from verse 12 to 27, he talked about the body of Christ. Then from verse 28 to 31, he talked about ministry gifts. You see, the body of Christ is also off and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Ministry gifts are also off and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. So a demonstration of the Spirit could be the corporate anointing at work, which is stronger than an individual anointing, which is stronger than an anointing on a ministry gift. So that could also be a demonstration of the Spirit. The glory cloud could appear. And that's a demonstration of the Spirit. Are you listening? So it includes all those things. They are off and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Manifestations of the Spirit. What we call gifts of the Spirit. Technically, they are really... A better word is manifestations. But it's okay to also call them gifts. Because he said the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man a prophet with all. So we could call them gifts of the Spirit. But speaking very, very technically, only four of them are gifts. Three of them are administrations. Two of them are operations. Don't ask me that. We, are not, we don't have time to go into that classification. But ministry gifts are also often pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Imagine somebody teaches about the office of the evangelist. Then someone comes and demonstrates it. That's a demonstration of the Spirit. Maybe there's a teaching about the prophet's office. And then a New Testament prophet is now in operation in full regalia. Then that becomes a demonstration of the Spirit. You get that. Now, so that's demonstrations, right? Now, demonstrations of the Spirit also open up to another area. And I'll tell you that area. There are also physical demonstrations of the Spirit. Are you listening? Physical demonstrations of the Spirit. I'm just introducing, actually, you know. Uh, what we're talking about is supernatural life, and I'll get there. So, uh, there are physical demonstrations of the Spirit. You say, what? are those. For instance, you notice that when they came to arrest Jesus, you know, and he said, I'm he, the Bible says he fell over backwards. When, yeah, they fell under the power of God. When Saul of Tarsus had that experience on the road to Damascus and he saw Jesus, he fell to the ground. Yeah, when the natural and the supernatural meet, one is going to give and it's not going to be the supernatural. It'll be the natural. Yeah, I know there are people they push, you know, there are people that feign it but listen, there's such a thing as people falling under the power of the Spirit of God. I don't like to say slain. Slain gives the idea of they were killed. You know, God is not the killer. He's the life giver. Amen. So I prefer to say they fell under the power. You know, so, so, these days you have our slay queens. I wonder who they are killing or who they are planning to kill. Anyway, you know, so falling under the power, that's a physical demonstration of the Spirit. Then, you know, there's also things like people falling into a trance. We saw that when Peter went to the house stop to pray and God showed him about the Gentiles. You know, and then folks from Cornelius' house came. You know, and then Lord, the Holy Ghost said three men seek thee, go with them, doubting nothing. You know, so people falling into a trance. One day, Maria Woodworth Eater was preaching. And all of a sudden, in the middle of a sentence, he just stood still and stayed like that for 72 hours. 72 hours after she continued the sentence she was making. Now, that's a demonstration of the Spirit. It's a physical demonstration of the Spirit. One time, 
Brother Hagin talked about one of those churches he pastored. There was the platform. You know, he sensed the Spirit of God was moving on a certain sister. Right. So he told her, yield to the Holy Ghost. She came up, you know, and began to exhort sinners to get saved. Her eyes were shut. So she didn't see what was happening. When a sinner would respond, she would dance in the Spirit. When another woman would respond, she would dance in the Spirit. When all the sinners there came forward, she danced a jig for joy as if a final dance without any music and danced right off the platform in mid-air. Yeah. And moved around like that. Moved around like that. Yeah. Nothing underneath her. Hundreds of people witnessed it. What was that? That was a physical demonstration of the Spirit of God. And you see, God can also demonstrate himself like that. Brother Hagin talked about one time in one of his meetings, there was this 17-year-old girl who stood still like a statue for eight hours and they couldn't move her. I've been in meetings. I was in a meeting where the keyboard started playing and there was nobody on it. Now, that's a demonstration of the Spirit. I remember. I remember it vividly. There are people who are in that meeting that are alive today. Yeah. I was in a meeting one time. The glory cloud came. Now, a few people saw it. But everybody, whether you saw it or not, if you lifted your hand in the air above your head, you had an electric shock. There was electricity in the atmosphere, just uh, like a feet or, or a feet or two above our heads. Now, th that's a demonstration of the Spirit. See, the Spirit of God can demonstrate Himself in those ways. For instance, you know, people hear a phenomenon like some folks laughing. When laughing gas wasn't poured on them. And sometimes we wonder, what's that? Is that correct? Can that be okay? Are, are they losing it? Is something wrong with those guys? But you see in Psalm 126, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we're glad. Notice it says, it's on the captivity of Zion. Who's Zion? According to Hebrews 12, the church is Zion. Now, has our captivity been turned around? Colossians 1.13, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dead son. Notice it said, we're like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. You know, we just had some singing. We had some folks lead us in singing. If it's okay for people to lead us in singing, it'll also be okay for people to lead us in laughing. Amen. Just laughing. You say just laughing. Yeah, we're just laughing. The Bible says, a merry heart doeth good. Proverbs 17, 22, like a medicine. You know, my kids, I still did this yesterday. Hmm? I still did this yesterday. I went to pick one of them from boarding school. You know, and sometimes I'll just sleep behind them. They, they don't, they can't see, and I'll just tickle them. They will jump and laugh. Yeah. You think I'm the only one who does that? Where do you think I got it from? <laughs> Go to our father. Sometimes he just likes to come behind and just tickle us and we jump. That's why we laugh like we do. You think God is so stiff? You think God is like, uh, his face is always le looking like, let us pray. You think that's how he, he is? Yeah. God is a fun God. You see, some people's idea of heaven, eh? the idea of heaven, is one koi koi place like this, where you get bored, you know, in the first day. You know, in Revelation, it was recorded that there was a period of 30 minutes that there was silence in heaven. It had to be recorded because heaven isn't silent. Are you listening? Yeah. There's joy in heaven. You know, in Psalm 2 verse 4, the Bible says that he that seated in the heavens shall laugh. God laughs. And he laughs hilariously. Yeah. And you know, the Bible says we are seated together with him in heavenly places, right? So we share in his laughter. Amen. So, just laughing inspired by the Holy Ghost. Now, you know, we learn from God's word primarily. We also learn by experience. Sometimes you have a prayer burden to pray about something. Then you continue to pray until the burden lifts. Then you have a note of victory. Then when you have that note of victory, sometimes you begin to sing in tongues. Sometimes you begin to laugh. 
Yeah. So, then you know, whatever you are praying for, it's been sorted. Now, if you have a prayer burden, keep praying until the burden lifts. It may take 30 minutes, it may take three hours, it may take two days, but keep praying until you pray it out and get that note of victory. So, laughing, that's a physical demonstration of the spirit. Dancing, Psalm 149 verse 3. Psalm 150 verse 4. The Bible talks about praising God in the dance. We read in 2 Samuel how David danced before the Lord with all of his might. He danced so much. Now, that his wife, that his first wife. First of all, I was still reading that. Was it today or yesterday? You know, and I just look, my daily Bible reading. I just look, first and foremost, why was she in the house? And why didn't she go to be among the people who are excited about the ark of God coming to Israel? You know? He danced so hard, some of his clothes might have gone somehow. And then she now said, look, a whole king of Israel looking vile before the people. David responded. He said, it was before the Lord. Who puts me ahead of your father as a king? You know, David rarely spoke like that. But he did. He did. It was something grievous. You know, that's the only woman in the Bible who died barren. That we have record of. Only one. Only one. She despised it. It must have been quite a big deal. That someone that despised that, that happened to her. Now, David was not born again. He didn't have the life of God in his spirit. He was in the flesh. All their praise and worship in the Old Testament was in the flesh. In the New Testament, we have the spirit of God in us, isn't it? If they could dance under the shadow, we sure can dance in the, the reality. Amen. So sometimes the spirit of God comes on us. You see, the world should come to the church to learn, to learn dance steps. The church shouldn't go to the world to learn it. The world should come to us. Because, listen, our father is a father of ingenuity. You know, the Bible says in Luke 10, 21, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. I looked up that word rejoice. You know, Strong says he jumped for joy. Jesus actually... You think he jumped? Wow! That's where we got it from. Another rendering of it says to make an upward forward movement. There's a proverb in, you know, Yorubas have. They say, any force, okay, to be jewelry. Yeah. The person who jumped, as in, ah, ah, dance, he has danced. Amen. So you see, those are physical demonstrations of the Spirit of God. You know, I've been in meetings where people were struck speechless. Happened, it's happened to me on some occasions. Sometimes, if I'm in a meeting and I'm going in a wrong direction, or God wants to arrest my attention, and I'm continuing to talk along a certain line, and he wants me to hush, sometimes I'm struck speechless, and I can't talk. Yeah, I can't talk. First time that happened to me for a protracted period was December 1992. Hmm? I couldn't speak English until the next day. Yeah, and I stayed awake most of the night. I couldn't speak English. If I tried to talk, his tongues have come out of my mouth. Yeah. You, know, you read in Ezekiel where the Bible will say the hand of the Lord came on him. And his tongue clave to the roof of his mouth. Yeah. And he was struck speechless. The Spirit of God can do stuff like that. Remember Elimas the sorcerer? He wasn't blind with blindness. Saul of Tarsus. He wasn't blind with blindness. The spirit of God came on them and they couldn't see. One time, I heard this from Brother Hagin's mouth. Hmm? He said, there was this rumor grad when USSR was still communist. She was preaching behind the, that iron curtain. And while she was, he said, all of a sudden, some KGB guys came in with submachine guns in their hands. Of course, they didn't come to play. They came to do business. You know? She just spoke from the pulpit. I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. They fell to the ground. They were glued to the floor. They couldn't move. When the meeting ended and everything was done, she went to them and said, I release you in Jesus' name. And then they were released. They ran for their life. If you were them, will you stay? So that's a 
demonstration of the spirit. I remember one time, you know, I was preaching in a certain university campus. There, there were some rules about don't use this place, fellowships, you gather that place. So some security guys were sent to stop the meeting. You know, the Holy Ghost has a sense of humor. One of those guys, Spirit of God, gave a word of knowledge about a certain health condition he had. It was bullseye. And then he was healed instantly. He sat down in the meeting. He said, continue your meeting. Continue your meeting. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. The guy said, anytime you want to have meeting, have meeting. We need more of these kind of meetings. Amen. So there could be physical demonstrations of the Holy Ghost in dancing and laughing. You know, sometimes we've been struck speechless. There was one of Brother Higgins meetings. The service was dismissed. As people were trying to leave the door, when they got to where the entrance was, they fell over. Then the next person fell over. Then the next person fell over. Then the next person fell over. And then they could, nobody could go. There was one service. He was trying to close the meeting. He gave the mic to the first person to close the service. The guy fell out. He gave the mic to the next person. That one fell out. Gave the mic to another person. That one couldn't talk. One fellow said, no, I don't believe that. That can't be real. I'm going to take that mic and close that meeting. He went there. He said the next thing, the, the last thing he remembered was holding the mic. The next thing he remembered, he was on the floor. Yeah. See, those are physical demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. It's not only the devil that has kanoko, that has a bay. It's not only the devil that has a fairy. It's not only the devil that has all those physical phenomenon. If the devil has it, and he's a counterfeiter, he's counterfeiting the real. Anything the devil can do, God can top it. God can top it. Are you listening to me? So, the Spirit of God can demonstrate himself. The Spirit of God can manifest himself. The Spirit of God can move in such ways. And in a Holy Ghost meeting, those are the kind of things that happen. Now, you see, some of these things need to be taught. If they are not taught, then people don't know what they are. There are some places I go. If the Holy Ghost is moving on me to dance, I won't. You know why? The spirit of the prophet is over to the prophet. And the law of the family of God is the law of love. I will constitute a nuisance. They don't understand it. Some will even come and cast the, try to cast the devil out of the person who is doing it. Because they think he's a devil. Do you understand? And it's because these things need to be taught. Amen. So, we said, number one, in a Holy Ghost meeting, the Word of God is preached and not taught. Number two, in a Holy Ghost meeting, the Spirit of God is leading, is guiding, is in demonstration, and in manifestation. And then number three, the Lord said to Brother Hagin that in a Holy Ghost meeting, the needs of the people are met, and they are full of joy. The needs of the people are met, and they are full of joy. See, God is not a mean God. He's a good God. He's interested in meeting needs. In meeting the needs of people. If someone is lost, the person needs salvation, right? If someone is born again, not filled with the Holy Ghost, then the person needs baptism in the Holy Ghost. If somebody is sick, then the person needs healing. If somebody is in a financial strait, the person needs a breakthrough. If someone is seeking direction in their life and they are confused, you know, and they get a confirmation of what God is speaking to them in their heart, that's that need being met. So in a Holy Ghost meeting, the needs of the people are met and they are full of joy. He said the Lord particularly emphasized joy to him. Amen. Joy. You know, John 16, 23 and 24, that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He said to up till now, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. So God wants our joy to be full. Amen. First Peter 1 8 says, Whom have you not seen, ye love? In whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, that joy is full of glory. It's anointed. Remember, the Bible says that Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. And the Bible says that joy is full of glory. Romans 8, 11 lets us know it was the Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead. So that means the glory of the Father is the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that joy is full of glory. It's anointed. Let me tell you something. There's no sad Holy Ghost. There's no depressed Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is called the oil of gladness. The oil of joy. Amen. Glory to God. Praise Jesus. 
Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. So, those are the things you expect to see in a Holy Ghost meeting. Just given what to expect. It's like you want to take jam, you know, and they're telling you the kind of questions to expect. This is the syllabus. So, what to expect. So, we are open, right? Any of those things, any direction he wants to go. Now, typically, for Holy Ghost meetings, I prepare differently. Sometimes I don't have a sermon. Most times I don't. I don't prepare a sermon. I don't prepare a message. I prepare my spirit more so anything else. I just spend time praying in the spirit and meditating in God's word. Not uh, preparing a message. Just meditating in God's word. Sometimes I get to the meeting and as I'm sitting down, before I take the mic, the Lord tells me what to do. Yeah. Or what to share if he wants me to share. Sometimes he doesn't want me to share. You see, you know, we can get, we ought to put the preaching and teaching of God's word first. But there's a way we can get spoiled about preaching and teaching. Some of us, you know, in the name of, I'm a stickler for the word. I'm a stickler for the word. You know, you can be such a stickler for the word that you ward away the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you ward him away. War. We must teach war. And then the spirit of God is wanting to move. And then no, I haven't finished my message. No, I, I, my sermon has six points. Look, if the Holy Ghost wants to move, let him move. He knows the needs of the people. He knows how to reach them. It's good to even give allowance for the spirit of God to move. Amen. Praise God. We can be bound by our notes. We can be bound by our message. It's okay if you don't finish your message. I bet Peter did not finish his message in Cornelius' house. While he was still speaking, the Holy Ghost fell. Maybe the Holy Ghost fell, felt like, this is your message. It's in done they plenty. This is your grandma, don't they too much. I beg. The Holy Ghost just meshonnoed him. I moved. He said, uh, there's no thing. What will I preach? He said, let's go and baptize them in water. Amen. So, those kind of things happen. And we're open to his moving. Now, a theme of this uh, evening service is supernatural life. Supernatural life. Just a few things I'll say about supernatural life. Just something skeletal, you know? Just something skeletal that I'll just say. Uh, have a skeletal thing in my mind. Now, because I was given that theme, that they are the leaders of this meeting. He called the meeting. They are the leaders here. So, you know, the Spirit of God will never tell you to violate the leader. Eh, eh. Pastor says, you should do it. Say, no, the Holy Ghost said, eh, eh, eh. there's no stupid Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, the poor you always have with you. Sometimes I feel like saying, the stupid we always have with us. No, I know you don't have any of them. You know? But you see, there's such a thing as submitting to authority. And that's also part of flowing with the Holy Ghost. The most important thing about flowing with the Holy Ghost actually is walking in love. That's the most important thing about flowing with the Holy Ghost. And if you walk in love, you will honor people. You will treat people right. You will honor the local church. Sometimes I see people do things that will take away from the local church. It can't be right. And some of them will have the audacity to say the Spirit of God told them to do it. He didn't anymore tell them that I'm a monkey's uncle. Because he will not violate himself in the Bible. He inspired the scriptures. Now, you see, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, I'm off to the message now. The Bible says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, we could go in several directions with that. We could put it like this, walk in the supernatural and you will not fulfill the lusts of the natural. You see, Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. Man's realm is actually the supernatural realm. Man was created by a supernatural God. And he was created as a supernatural being. To walk in the supernatural realm. And to experience the supernatural things that God has put in place. Adam committed high treason. When he did, his spiritual faculties became impaired. And then he got separated from God. His physical senses gained ascendancy over his spirit. And man began to depend on his senses for survival. 
An interim government God put in place was the law. It was a schoolmaster. You know, King James says to bring us to Christ. The law can never bring anybody to Christ. A better rendering really of that is to bring us until the time of Christ. Amen. So, Jesus finally came. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, eternal life is now made available to the spirits of men. And not only can we be born again, which is a supernatural experience, we can then be filled with God's supernatural spirit. And when we are, there's a supernatural sign. We begin to speak in other tongues. So God wants us to walk in the supernatural. Listen. God wants us as believers to be naturally supernatural. And to be supernaturally natural. Did you get that? Naturally supernatural. And supernaturally natural. You know, if something is not natural, it's not right. That's why homosexuality is a sin. It's an abomination. Lesbianism, all those things. They are not natural. That's why some things are not right. They are not natural. God's word appeals to naturalness. So God wants us. There's a natural world, right? We live in a natural world and a supernatural world at the same time. God wants us in the natural. We must put the supernatural first. But he now wants us to impose the supernatural on the natural. So that we are naturally supernatural. And we are supernaturally natural. You know, Supposing you saw someone, the person was doing like this. You say, what are you doing? Say, I'm walking in the spirit. Say, no, no, you are not. The Holy Ghost is called the spirit of a sound mind. It's not a goofy spirit. It's not a spooky spirit. Are you listening? Someone told me that God told him at 1 a.m. to come out and bathe outside. I said, yeah, a God told you that, but it's not the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Someone said, God told him he should remove his wedding ring. He should put it in a bottle. He should hang it in a certain place. Ah, ah. Now, juju be that. You know, that's getting spooky. That's getting goofy. The Holy Ghost. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The spirit of God is a spirit of a sound mind. Yeah, God can give us instructions that may not make sense. That may not be logical, but you know, yes, that something doesn't make sense or something cannot, be, okay, wine finished, they fill the pots with water. That doesn't make sense, right? But the water became wine. That's different from goofy. Goofy is in another realm. Spooky is in another world, not in that world. So God wants us to walk in the supernatural. Now, what will that include? When as a believer, you live victoriously, over the flesh, over the world, and over the devil, you are walking in the supernatural. When you are not sleeping around, when you are not stealing money, when you are not lying or cursing like a sailor, when you are not living that low life, hmm? when you are not dominated by the flesh, you are walking in the supernatural. Our spirits have been reborn. They have been recreated. We still have the same mind we had before we got saved. We still have the same body we had before we got saved. Your body will want to do the things it used to do. Your mind will want to think the way it used to think. But God's word tells us that we're to renew our minds with God's word. And we're to present our bodies to God as a living sacrifice. God's word teaches that we're to let our recreated spirits dominate us. That's how to impose the supernatural. That's how to walk in the supernatural. Once the spirit gains ascendancy... Hmm? and a person lets his spirit be the dominant man, he will live in the realm of the supernatural unconsciously. Amen. You see, man was made by the miracle walking God. There's a deep-seated hunger in the heart of universal man for the miraculous. Man craves the touch of the unseen. A stream of miracles flowed from the hands of the apostles that upset Judaism and shook the Roman government to its foundations. The apostles had made a discovery that the name of the man they had loved and seen nailed to that cross in nakedness now has power equal to that which he exercised while he walked in their midst. Amen. The miraculous. The miraculous. The miraculous. That's man's realm. You see, every answer to prayer is a miracle. Every victory over temptation is a miracle. If you take the supernatural out of Christianity then Christianity loses its virility and its fascination. Judaism was Judaism. 
as long as the miracle walking God, the supernatural doing God was walking in their midst. Are you listening? So God wants us to walk in the supernatural. So walking in the supernatural will include, like I said, living victoriously over the flesh, the world, and the devil. Walking in the supernatural will include walking in health. It's natural in this world to be sick. It's natural. People get sick. Right? Yeah. But look, we are supernatural beings from another world. So it's supernatural to walk in health. So when you walk in health, you're walking in the supernatural. That's what we're talking about. A supernatural life. It's natural in this world to be broke. It's natural in this world to be needy. Remember how Adam Smith defined economics? That man's resources are limited. His needs are unlimited. How he uses his limited resources to meet his unlimited needs. But you know that's man's economics, right? God's is different. Man's needs are limited. God's resources are unlimited. Amen. It's supernatural to walk in abundance. When they say there is a casting down, we will say there is a lifting up. At famine and at destruction, we laugh. The Bible says, his fruit shall not wither. Whatever he doeth shall prosper. The Bible says the righteous as the palm tree. Yeah. We flourish. We thrive. All weather. All weather. All weather. Whether there's, whether there's death, whether there's scarcity. Yes, we feel for people. And do the best we can to help people. But no. You know, that there's a recession doesn't mean you should participate in it. There's, there's economic downturn. Doesn't mean you should, your own economy should turn down. Are you listening? So when you walk in financial provision, right? And you are able to be a blessing. You have more than enough for your needs. God making all grace abound towards you. So that you having always all sufficiency in all things. Abound unto every good work. That's supernatural. So that's what we're talking about. The supernatural life. But you see, it's not limited to that. When you are able to get the lost saved. Right? Get him filled with the Holy Ghost. When you are able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. And to grow out short arms and legs. That's part of the deal. Jesus said, he that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. When you're able to do that, you're walking in the supernatural. That's a supernatural life. Are you listening to me? See, gifts of the spirit belong to the church. To the body of Christ. I tell you something about the Holy Ghost. He's not a miser. He's not a tight word. He's not hoarding them. They don't need creative miracles in heaven. They don't need knee kidney. They don't need it in heaven. He's here that people need them. Those manifestations of the Holy Ghost, they are for us. When you are able to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, in the manifestations of the Spirit, you're walking in the supernatural. When you're able to bring the power of God to bear, are you listening to me? And you know, it works the same whether you're a preacher or whether you sell cars. I remember I had one exam. I will, <laughs> another story just came to my mind. Okay, I'll tell you three of them. You know? was to sit geography, school sat. I actually saw the, for regional geography, I saw all the four questions. Spirit of God showed me what the questions were. Of course, I had enough sense not to go announce it in class. That's how they would say I saw Expo. Yeah, I just called some brethren that know the Holy Ghost. I said, look, I had this vision. This is what I saw. These are going to be the four questions in that exam. They were the four questions. Yeah, that's supernatural. There was one time, hmm, we were to have a test. The teacher had said, this test is going to hold on such and such a date. About 3 a.m. the morning when the test was going to be. You know, you wonder why God would do things like that. An angel actually appeared to me and said, the test will not hold. I had this friend. I was following him up. Hmm? I got to class. I said, you know, this test will not hold. He looked at me and said, ah, if you did not prepare for the test, the test will hold. I said, I'm not talking about preparing or not preparing. Watch it. The man went on the board. He wrote the name of the course. He wrote test. The guy looked at me. I, huh? you better get ready. And I wrote on that has been postponed indefinitely. He said, did you talk to him? Did he tell you something? Hey, he's the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that was a sign for that guy. 
He was an unserious believer. And God just wanted to show him that he knows stuff. He can do stuff. I was walking down the road one day. I met a guy. I, I, I told him, I said, guess what? He said, what's that? I said, I'm a new creature. He was like, what does that mean? Oh, I knew it's not likely he's one. So I preached at him. You know, preached to him. I tried not to preach about him. You know? <laughs> and maybe I did a little bit. That is a sinner in need of a savior. Anyway, you know, when I finished, short message. When I finished, I said, I know you. I never asked sinners, do you want to get saved? I said, I know you want to get saved. So let's pray. Yeah. He said, I'm not interested. My feathers fell. He's like, oh gosh, what do I do here? I just looked inside me and then the Spirit of God told me his date of birth. He said, you are born on such and such a day. He said, how did you know that? He said, well, this Jesus I was telling you about, just as a sign to show you how much he wants you saved, he told me. Well, I got him born again and filled with the Holy Ghost by the roadside. Amen. So you see, that's supernatural. That's the purpose of those things. To magnify Jesus, to bring blessing to people, to reach the lost, to build up the body of Christ. That's what gifts of the Spirit are for. So the supernatural life is the life that God wants us to live. Where, personally, you walk in victory over the flesh, the world, and the devil. You walk in health. You walk in financial provision and abundance. And you are able to be a blessing to the work of God and to other people who are in need. Then, you are also able to demonstrate God's power to others. You are able to do the works of Jesus. That's the supernatural life I'm talking about. You're able to flow in the gifts of the Spirit as a member of the body of Christ, as the Spirit of God sees fit. That's supernatural life. The question is now, this supernatural life, how? You've told me what it is. I can see that. You've told me why it is important. I have heard that. Eh, how, 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 how? I always like the hows because I'm interested in knowing how. See, everybody in this class, in this hall now, can fly a plane. Everybody can. If only you know how. The difference between you and that pilot is he knows how and you don't. So if you know how, then you can do it. Supernatural life is so simple. It's so simple. It's not one high valuing formula. Pythagoras theorem. Almighty formula. Ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Then x is minus b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2aa. You say, I don't enter big A. I thought I've escaped that thing. I'm not meeting it in church service. No, you are not. I'm just saying it's not complicated. It's simple. It's two things. If you're going to walk in the supernatural, if you're going to live a supernatural life, two things. And the two things are two things you already know. Number one, the word of God. And number two, prayer. That's all. It's no more than that. Spending time on a daily basis, feeding on God's word. I'm putting the word of God to practice. Are you listening? Feeding on God's word. I'm putting the word of God to practice. See, the word of God must come first. Feeding on the word of God must come first. You see, eh? I know how to get the sick healed. Whether the Holy Ghost is a manifestation or is not in manifestation, I know how. Because I know what the word of God says. See, when you know the word of God, hmm, whether the Holy Ghost is moving or the Holy Ghost is not moving, you still can help people. You still can bless people. Because it's by God's word. The word of God will always work if you'll preach and teach God's word. But this is it. Some people will never be healed except there's a manifestation of the Spirit. Some people are too far gone. They can't understand if you try to teach them Bible. And then, Sometimes God will do some things just as a sign. I was preaching in one church or one assembly. All, actually, I was about to start my message. Spirit of God moved on me. I walked down the aisle. I got to one particular person and I had the person to stand up. He stood. I laid hands on him and he fell over backwards. I didn't know. Then he started talking in tongues. I didn't think much of it. I got a final later. The guy was a Muslim. When I touched him, the Spirit of God came on him. He got born again. God filled the Holy Ghost. And he got touched by God. In one breath. You say, how? Where did he say the sinner's prayer? How did that happen? Okay, you know, sometimes they will ask Jesus a question. By what authority do you do these things? Jesus will answer them with a question. So it's not a Nigerian thing. John's baptism, was it of God or of man? So when somebody asked me that, I said, I also have a question for you. In Cornelius' house, when did they say the sinner's prayer? When you have the answer for me, I'll have the answer for you. None of us has the answer. But you see, sometimes God will do some things just as a sign. 
just as a sign. And the Holy Ghost loves to do that. So, to walk in the supernatural of the word, feed on it, build it into your spirit, and put it to practice. And number two, maintain a prayer life. Maintain a prayer life. It's important that we learn to pray regularly. That we learn to pray regularly. Amen. The Bible says in Luke 18.1 that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Praise God. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. So maintain a prayer life. I found out something about praying in other tongues. Hmm? The Bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit to speak at mysteries? I heard something Kenneth e. Higgins said. He said he has found that the more he prays and worships God in other tongues, the more the manifestations of other gifts of the spirit he sees in his life. The less he prayed in tongues, the less he saw. He said that. John G. Lake said tongues is the making of his ministry. See, there's something about learning to pray a lot in other tongues. Of course, you know, tongues is not the only way to pray. And there's some prayers you can't even pray in tongues. You can't resist the devil in tongues. You need to resist him in the name of Jesus. You can't speak to a mountain in tongues. You need to speak and believe that what you say will come to pass. If you don't know what you said, how will you believe it will come to pass? Do you understand? So you need, there's some things, there's a place of praying in your understanding. It's just that hmm, we are very limited in our understanding. When you pray in other tongues, you're able to pray out the mystery of God's plans and purposes. You're able to pray out the future. You're able to pray out the supernatural life. I was praying in other tongues one day. As I was praying, I had a mini vision. I saw my dad was driving. I saw he knocked somebody down in his car as he was driving. So I knew that was what I was praying about. So I continued praying until the burden lifted. That's what happened. Some days after I found out he was driving, he knocked somebody down with his car. He didn't know. People shouted. They brought the child from under the car. It was a little child. Yeah, imagine a child being brought from under the... Of course, you have an idea. You have an idea. child was rushed to the hospital. The child did not have a scratch. That can't be anything but supernatural. Yeah. Another time I was praying, I saw a loved one of mine in his car and drive right into armed robbers. So I knew that was what I was praying about. I continued praying until the burden lifted. So I, I knew it was settled. That's what happened. That particular individual drove right into armed robbers. They saw him. They said, oh, it's you. He said, go. They didn't stop him. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. And I was driving a good car. Armed. Amen. Learning to pray in the spirit. Another person, loved one of mine, somebody came to meet him and said, look, I'm an assassin. I was sent to kill you. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And the person said, but you know what? I'm not going to do it. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. But tongues gets those kind of things to happen. Praying much in other tongues. Praying much in other tongues. I was praying in other tongues as a single man. Then I actually saw my wife. I've never seen her before. Yeah. I'm married to the person I saw today. Praying out the mystery of God's plans. That's how to live a supernatural life. That's how to see the supernatural. That's how to see the supernatural. I got a testimony today. Right? I, just, I got it on my phone. I can show you. <laughs> this person, they couldn't find the heartbeat actually. You know? And I told them to put the phone there. To the person I called the person's name I said you are not dying you are going to leave the person is alive today you see God's power now how could I what enables us to walk in those things hmm? just spend time in the word spend time in prayer there's no magic there's no it's so simple you need a preacher to help you misunderstand it are you listening to me just spend time in the world, spend time in prayer. There's no, there's no ooh, ooh, mago, mago, color, color. That's what it is. If I'm trying to tell you, you see, if you're going to see the supernatural, ah, you don't, you, you haven't started. When you first go to the seventh heaven, and then when you get to the seventh heaven, you go to the sixth sea. Ah, 
That one don't become magic. <laughs> you get my point? The word of God and prayer. The word of God and prayer. Amen. Praise God. So just live that way. Live that way. Live that way. Live that way. Live that way all the time. See, there's something about when you pray much in other tongues, eh? You see, you're yielding your tongue, the most unruly member of your body, to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> One time, the Lord told me this. He said, if you pray much in other tongues, you will not only consciously be led by the Spirit of God, you will even sometimes be unconsciously led. Yeah. And I've seen that. I've done some things before and I was so led. <laughs> and I didn't even realize it. When you pray a lot in other tongues, it's easy to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. It's easy to walk in the power of God. Brother Hagin, one time, when we were in a restaurant, met one man. He just hugged the man, patted him on the back. The man was bound with arthritis, but there was an accidental discharge of power. He didn't know. The man had that. He just, he just hugged the man, and the man's arthritis vanished. Because somebody hugged him. Hey, hey, that's supernatural, right? And that's how God wants us to walk. Amen. See, there's something God has called everybody to do. God has a plan and a purpose for each life. Not everybody is a preacher. Whether you're a lawyer, you're a doctor. Who said as a lawyer, you can't win cases supernaturally? You can. You can. You can. You can. Hmm. You can. One time, there was one man. The man was scheduled for a surgery. They found something. They were going to do it. My wife told me. He said he doesn't need to do that surgery. There's nothing wrong with him. I felt like, ha. He went to hospital in Nigeria. They said it. He went to hospital in UK. UK said it. My wife said, there's nothing wrong with him. They shouldn't do that surgery. I was like, hmm. Okay. Oh. Well, they did the surgery. The surgery caused complications. Serious complications. And they found out there was nothing there. Set the man back by like a year. You see, the spirit of God, you think he doesn't know medicine? Yeah, he does. He does. He can show you stuff. My wife practices. She's an eye doctor. There are times in dealing with some patients, the Lord will tell her exactly what's wrong with the patient. The spirit of God can help you as a banker. He can tell you, that guy, that check in his hand is forged. Don't pay that money. He can tell you, yeah, he can. He can tell you, that deal, don't do it. You'll lose your heart. You'll lose all your life savings. Don't do it. He knows. So I'm not just talking about the pulpit. I'm talking about a life. <laughs> you see, J.R. Goodwin, they adopted this child. He and his wife, they adopted the child. The child wasn't quite living right. So sometimes we just come and say, you smoke two stick of, sticks of cigarette today. Come and ask Jesus to forgive you. <laughs> the boy used to wonder how did they know brother Higgin had this niece Ruth who stayed with him so one day Ruth came and said that they had home accounts practicals in school one Saturday she wanted permission to go he said okay gave her permission he said but this is the deal make sure you are back in the house by 9 o'clock if a male uh -huh, comes to see you don't stay out in the dark in the car with the male Come inside the living room with the lights on where anything you can't do in the light, you shouldn't do. You know, that niece of his, she was already grown. She got into some trouble, you know. So she was already quite formed. It wasn't like she grew up with him. She was 16 years old. Well, she came back after nine. She stayed in the dark. There was a guy. He was in the guy's, she was in the guy's car till past 10. Eventually, they now came, you know, to the house. He, he saw all of it. Next morning at the breakfast table, he said, look, the next 40 days you are grounded. You are not going anywhere except school or church. She said, why? Why what was that for? No, I will go. She said, look, I told you that you must come before nine or latest by nine. And I told you, if you did this, you should, do, you should bring the person here, you know. Then he said, besides, 
You told me you were coming from going for home accounts practicals. accounts. That wasn't where you went. You went to teach your friends dance steps. She said, who, who told that lie on me? She said, hold on. She, the, the color of the, of the wall was this. Then the furniture was arranged like this. Then this chair was this color. It was put here. Then the one of your friends, that one looked like this. That one was hair. Then this one was hair. Then it happened like this. You know what? Her mouth went like this. She said, how did you know? She said, the Holy Ghost showed me. Ah. She said, he showed you. <laughs> he really showed you. She said, because that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, the Holy Ghost knows stuff. He can help you with parenting. He can help you in every area. We can, even in pastoring, we can pastor supernaturally. When I pastored, I never had a program of visitation. I knew when any of my members was in trouble. I knew. And I will just show up. And I get to them and I start talking about the trouble and what they should do and what they had done and what they shouldn't do and how to fix it. One of them asked me, said, you know why we don't live in sin here? I said, yeah, I endeavor to teach you God's word and to believe the best of you and to be an example. He said, look, we believe there's nothing you can, we can do and you won't know. And of course, I'm not all knowing. But you see, if you had gotten busted, that's what happened. Yeah, of course, not to condemn anybody. The Spirit of God is not in that kind of ministry. It's in the ministry of helping people. But you see, the supernatural is meant to be our natural. It's meant to be as natural to us as water is to a fish. You know one thing about gifts of the Spirit? Yes, the Spirit of God wills. But you see, we can prepare ourselves. There are things I can do hmm, so that I'm more susceptible to those manifestations. If I spend more time in the Word and more time in prayer, uh, if God wants to move that way, then it's easier for him to get through to me. Are you listening? There are things we can do and we can increase manifestations of the Spirit of God in our midst. Amen. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. I was praying for a meeting one time and then I had an audible voice. Not the still small voice of my spirit. The audible authoritative voice of the Holy Ghost. And then the voice called a name. The first name, the last name. I never heard the name before. When I heard that name, I thought, what's that? And then inside of me, I knew. When you get to that meeting tonight, call this person out and this is what I want you to tell her. So I don't forget. Before I preached, I said, okay, who is so and so? Oh, my lady lifted up and I said, that's my name. I said, I was praying today and God told me to tell you something. Come and hear it. I didn't need to say it through the mic, right? Because it was something for her. And it's not about trying to display what I can do. You know, gifts of spirit are not for show off. Gifts of spirit are to magnify Jesus and to bring blessing to people. That's what they're for. It was on Thursday by Sunday it had happened. She got a miracle. I laid hands on one person one time. The moment I touched the person, the Lord said to me, she has appendicitis, but she doesn't know it. She went to the hospital. They discovered she had appendicitis. Yeah. The Spirit of God knows stuff. He can reveal stuff. I was in a meeting one time and then I just felt led to do this. I said, any 10 people should come out. If I can supernaturally tell you about you, what I don't know any other way, would you believe this is God and that he wants you blessed? I said, sure. I said, any 10 people. Or oh, sure, just make sure they are 10. Nothing special to 10, but not just, I don't want 200 people. We won't live here tonight. You know? It was a demonstration of the spirit. I wish I could do that every time. Lord, help me to do it this time. Well, 10 of them came. One of them actually was a vet doctor. I didn't know that before. He told somebody on his seat, the guest who invited me, he's the person I heard the story from. He said, it's impossible. Nobody can do that. He said, the guy's never seen me before. He can't know anything about me. He got out. As soon as I touched him, I saw something. From what I saw, I told him, I said, you're a doctor. He said, you're a vet doctor. He said, how did you know that? I said, oh, you are in a relationship. The lady broke off three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. God can reveal stuff. Are you listening? He can reveal stuff. He can reveal stuff. I was preaching in one church. 
And then I looked at one fellow and I knew what had happened in his life. I knew, I just knew everything. I saw everything in a flash. I don't know. But of course, gifts of the spirit, we must walk in love. Amen. To bring blessing to people. And God can do stuff. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, the word of God and prayer. The word of God and prayer. The word of God and prayer. That's how to walk in the supernatural. Now, I say something about gifts of the spirit. There's the spirit of God wheels. We can't press a button, pull a lever, and produce a manifestation. There's the spirit of God wheels. The best we can do is to stay open to him. I learned something long ago. The Holy Ghost is not moving in gifts of the spirit. I'm not the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I remember one time, someone invited me to a meeting. They said, in that meeting, we want you to manifest. I told the guy, I said, I'm not a demon. And I'm not the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that manifests himself. So those things are as the spirit of God wills. Amen. But you see, if we, I learned this. If the Holy Ghost is not moving in gifts of spirit, I just preach and teach the word of God and I close the meeting. If he's moving in gifts of spirit, great. In a Holy Ghost meeting, is a special kind of meeting where we give room for him to move like he wants. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He is a good God. Now, I saw myself do something. Could you please come? Yes. Yes. The lady in red. Yeah. I saw myself do something. And I'm just going to act it out. Right? It won't hurt, right? Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Is there anybody whose name is Bosse here? Any Bosse? I just heard Bosse. Bosse. Who is Bosse? Any Bosse. Your name is Bosse. Any Bosse. I don't know what about Bosse. I just heard Bosse. Any bosser. I don't know what about it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's actually a healing. Yeah, it's a healing. Bosser needs a healing. Yeah. Who's the bosser that needs a healing? Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise God. Well, God knows that's your name, right? Amen. Yeah. And the Lord told me exactly what the healing was. What healing she needed. Amen. Well, I didn't do that. Let's wave our hands to the Lord. Jesus did that. Yeah. Jesus did that. 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 He's the healer. He's the healer. He's the healer. You know, we're open to the moving of the Spirit. You know, we could have a Holy Ghost meeting. And sometimes you just laugh and laugh and dance and dance and jump and shout. And that's fine. But you know, we could also have a Holy Ghost meeting and we don't do any running. We don't do any dancing. And we're just solemn. And God just ministers to people. And God just speaks to people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's somebody that lost the use. You lost the use of a limb. You lost the use of a limb. Who are you? You lost the use of a limb. You lost the use of a limb. Whether it's a hand, whether it's a leg. You just lost the use. I don't know what happened. I don't know what caused it. But you lost the use of a limb. Who are you? All right. Praise God. Who wants to heal you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of that's above every other name. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. Amen. Praise God. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Whatever it was you couldn't do before, begin to do it. Because God's healing power is working in your body. You know something? You fall in the same category. Oh, sure. Amen. Praise God. If God is moving in a direction, as many people as have needs in that direction, God's power will work for them. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, you're a good God. You are the healer. Your healing power goes into our body now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to 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 God. He's the healer. 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 Is the healer. Is the healer. Is the healer. Is the healer. You know what they said wasn't true. What they said wasn't true. It wasn't true. It wasn't true. What they said of you. What they said you'll become. It's not true. It's not true. You are who God says you are. You understand? Yeah. Those voices that put you down. Those voices that told you you couldn't be this. You couldn't be that. You're not good enough. You don't measure up. That's a lie. 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 From the pits of hell. Because you see, you are the righteousness of God. And you're complete in him. Which is the head of all principality and power. And you have the wisdom of God. You have the mind of Christ. Amen. So nothing to look down. Nothing to uh, be, be dejected about. Nothing to, to be discouraged about. Nothing to be depressed about. Praise God. Come, 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 come forward. Praise God. Come forward. Amen. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie of the devil. It's a lie of the devil. It's a lie of the devil. You are who God says you are. You have what God says you have. You can do what he says you can do. Amen. And he says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what he says. He says you are complete in him. He says you are righteousness. That's what he says about you. So stop thinking those lies of the devil. Stop letting those words play. Stop playing them over and over in your mind. Amen. Forget about it. 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 There's that other situation. Yeah, it's sorted also. And a third one too. Amen. That you will, you know, those things you said, Lord, as I go to that meeting, I just want you to speak to me about this. I want you to speak to me about that. Yeah, should I take that step? Should I make that move? Should I go ahead? Don't go ahead. Wait a little bit. 
Wait a little bit. It's not your time to do it. Just wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means wait a little bit. The timing is not just yet. Amen. And then in the right time, you will have a quickening on the inside. And you'll know that this is it. And this is God. And it's now. I don't know if that makes sense. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands to him. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. I remember one church I was ministering in. And then I called these guys. I called them out. I said, I see something about you going to the UK. The pastor looked at me and said, he's going to the UK. He just got a scholarship to go. I said, apparently, the Spirit of God knew. You know? And then something about his trip that God wanted him. You know, God knows stuff. You know that. And sometimes he'll just do some things and move in some ways to bless us. I was, one time I was on a healing line hmm? in a church. I laid hands on this guy. As soon as I laid hands on him, I said, the string of your tongue is loosed. This pastor looked at me. I said, do you know him before? I said, no. He said, he's a stammer. Yeah. You know, some of those things, you know that this is God. And God does stuff like that to help us. I was preaching one time, actually teaching. And then sometimes I walk around. I got in front of this lady. And then I heard on the inside of me, tell that lady she's healed. I thought, I don't even know she's sick. I didn't do it the first time. I continued. Then I heard it the second time. Tell that lady she's here. Well, the third time around, I stopped. I said, listen up, folks. I'm human. I could miss it. But I seemed to feel inspired and impressed. I pointed at the lady. Tell her she's here. She didn't show much emotion. Just this stuff like, praise God. I found out later that she had a heart condition. And she was instantly healed. Yeah, God can do stuff like that. To bless people. To bless people. Because he's a good God. Because he's a good God. He's a good God. Someone, you got into a business deal. A business deal. And then you lost some millions. And it looks like, sometimes you feel like it's a bad shape. It's bad shape. Because like half of the money was not your own. Yeah. And it's like, will I ever get out of this mess? Sometimes you're thinking, what's the way out? What should I do? Thoughts have come to you. Just end everything. Listen, don't listen to those thoughts. Hmm? It's money. Are you listening to me? It's money. It's just money. Money that has amount. Eh? Eh? Insult has entered it. It's money. It's just money. It's just money. You understand? Yeah. Don't do anything stupid because of money. Your father makes planets. Your father makes planets. Your father is El Shaddai. Amen. And he's going to fix it for you. Watch it. Yeah, will it happen by tomorrow morning? Maybe not. But watch it. He's going to fix it. He's going to turn things around. And in a short while, you will look back. And it will be like, wow. I never thought I could come out of that hole. But here I am in plenty today. And you want to say, how did it happen? you even won't be able to explain how it happened. Now, if that's you, just lift up your hand. Amen. Yeah, I was talking to you. I knew it was you. But it'll work for you too. Amen. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. Anybody else, if it fits you, just say, I believe it and I receive it. And it'll work for you. Praise God. Glory to 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 God. He's a good God and he's our father. He's our father and he's a good father. He's a loving father. He's a loving father. He's a caring father. He's a compassionate father. Amen. Who's interested in everything we're interested in? He's interested in fixing stuff. You know that? He's interested in sorting things out in our lives. He's interested in everything we're interested in. And he has great plans. Great plans for us. He has great plans for us. I don't know what it is, but you ought to say something. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, Shatara Bahar. It's release, it's like a release. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> Ah, yeah, Dabaha. 
I don't know, but I, first of all, the like eyes are just opening. <laughs> yeah, come. Eyes, eyes are just opening. Eyes are just opening. There are injuries that I don't know, but there's like it's deep, deep in your spirit. But like there's the healing is coming from within. It's coming from within. Ah, ah, it's coming from within. I don't know about pain. Is it pain? Ah, is your pain greater than the pain on that Christ received on your behalf? Ah, I don't know. Ah, but let ah, letting it out, like surrendering, like he surrendered. It's a place for surrender, you know. So surrender. Uh, but I just know that voices are being amplified. It's about amplification. This renewal is amplifying you. He's taking us places. Is it nations you seek? They are at your beck and call. It's all in the word. Who is the word? If you have Christ in you, you have the word. It is all about the word. There's no other solution than the word. It's just in the word. Find my blood. Ha! Hey, hey, it's flowing like a river. You seek peace. It's in the word. You seek joy. It's also in the word. So seek the hunger. Let the fire purify. Let his fire purify. Let his fire purify. Ah, oh, you want to see Jesus, right? <laughs> there is no other Jesus than the Word of God that you daily see, that you that, that you have. Okay, now the question is: It's been a month where you are meant to um, study the Word every daily, right? How many How many of us have have followed through? Set your heart. Set your heart. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You know, there's no superstar. There's only one, and it's Jesus. And he could minister to us and speak to us through any of us. Amen. The things he said, just take it. Mix faith with it. Mix faith with it. Mix faith with it. And it'll work for you. Amen. He is a good God. 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 You see about decisions, eh? Hmm? There's something about just following the peace in your heart. You want to go in a certain direction and you just have an uneasiness, a hesitancy, a check. Not necessarily a voice, not a dream, just an uneasiness. That's the Spirit of God saying, don't do it. Amen. That's the Spirit of God saying, don't do it. Yeah. 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 Just follow that witness. Just follow that witness. You, are, you, you just lose your peace. You're uneasy on the inside. Then don't go ahead. Then don't go ahead. You know, God will guide us through our spirits. He will guide us on the inside. We will know what to do. The leading of God. Sometimes you think, I'm going to have a dream. You may not. It's not even through dreams. He primarily guides us. A dream can come from God. A dream can come from the devil. A dream can also come from your own meditation. Are you listening? Check on the inside. 
Check on the inside. Check with the witness on the inside of you. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody, you're having trouble with one of your kidneys. Who are you? You're having trouble with one of your kidneys. Who are you? Having trouble with one of your kidneys. Who art thou? Who art thou? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You're having trouble with one of your kidneys. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. He is a good God. And he's the healer. There's no condition that is beyond his healing power. Impossible is an opinion. It's not his opinion. Amen. Who are you? You're having trouble with one of your kidneys. Who is the person? Who is the person? I want to pray for you. Praise God. Praise God. Nothing, it's nothing to feel ashamed about. Nothing to feel afraid about. Uh, I don't want people to know. Forget about that. Just get your healing. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. He is a good God. He is a good God. Listen to this. Yeah. Light is within your belly. Light is on the inside of you. The light of the path you ought to tow. The light of the direction you ought to walk in. It's already inside you. For you are light. It used to be darkness. But you are now light. Walk in that light. For you see, your presence in that family means there's development. Your presence in that family means the darkness is over. Your presence in that family means the answer has come. You are light. You are light. You are light. Know that. And stop running from pillar to post. Seeking for what is already inside you. You are that answer. Because you are in union with God. You are tied up to deity. You are a container and a carrier of light. Amen. You know you are light, right? You know you are light. You know you are light. You are light. And it doesn't have little light. Small light. And then some others are big light. We are all the same light. And you are light. You are light. The light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. The darkness cannot overpower it. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You see, sometimes eh, Christians struggle in some areas in their lives. You know, in their prayer life, struggling with one habit, struggling with one flesh thing. Listen to me. If you just continually spend time in the word of God and continually spend time in prayer, one day you just look back and say, you know, it's been six months. I didn't even realize that this thing has dropped off. You know, one day you look back, you say it's two years. And I don't even have a problem anymore with this. Amen. Just stay in the word and stay in prayer. And you're going to see the supernatural open up to you in a different dimension. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. You know that. But a power of love and a sound mind. Yeah, there's someone, there's a spirit of fear that is dogging your tracks. You're just afraid. There's a fear, a particular fear. A fear that you will die young. A fear that you will die young. Listen, you won't die young. He said, with long life, he will satisfy you and he will show you his salvation. You're just afraid that you'll have a car accident and you'll die. It's a lie. 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 Stop believing that fear. Stop believing it. It's a suggestion of the devil. Amen. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and just praise him and just thank him and just thank him and just thank him and just thank him. Now, you know, there's something about the laying on of hands, right? Yeah, it can be used for different things. Jesus appeared to me one time, you know, a number of times actually. But one of the times he did, he caught me up to heaven. He laid his right hand on my head. And then he said to me, he said, I've called you specially 
and anointed you specially to do what I've called you to do. This was June of 1992. He said, now I want you to go in the strength of that call. Among other things, I minister with the tangible anointing of God's power. Now, if you're here and you sense in your heart that God has called you to pulpit ministry, and you're not in pulpit ministry yet, but you sense in your heart that God wants you to do something about pulpit ministry, I'd like to pray with you and pray for you. And you know what? Talk with your pastors. Hmm? Sometimes we send something and then we jump. And we run too fast. And we mess things up. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Your pastors can counsel you and help you. And position you to do what God wants you to do. If that fits you, I'd like to pray with you and for you. Just come forward. Amen. You sense a call. You are not doing it now. But you sense that's what God wants you to do. Amen. I'd like to pray with you and for you. Yeah. The way we are called is not important. What's important is that we answer the call. Are you listening? Yeah. The way we know is we are an inward witness on the inside of us. The details of it usually will come as we take the first steps. Praise God. Father, thank you for these words. I ask that you give them clarity. I pray that you fill them with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Thank you for supernatural help. Thank you for direction. In Jesus' name. Mambra to susto, crevapa, predeva, susto, levera predethos, sese caravana manga, tiles to coro frebava, levero popo poro deste caviva namba pero toto, so se feca levranata, ste carefronosu, levera cristo coro vara pagas, se se feca levronos to coro vara predesi, se se feca levronos to coro frebava fredele, so se foro pagasa galefronosu. Veveveta paparata caste care frenoso, le redegos to coro fremeva fecale frenusto, le venapa para dava susto coro deva tile queste, care venambra beva thogolos de care frenasi, le venon papara pavatis de cate que tuto cotugo, le pava proso susto care de visa. Yeah, it, it, it will be fixed. The, the barriers will be fixed. They'll be out of your way in a short while. So just. Sit back and watch him do it. Yeah, watch him do it. Watch him do it. Yeah, and you're healed also in Jesus' name. Vega leva nampa para betho husto corofro nefe kiste veve viva volta care pronathas sese care fronotho corofro meve sese canambra da papa pedo to colotuso leva nambra beva to costo corofro meve fica lefra baba sese fo corofro nofo costo corofro baba leva rosto corofro baba fica lista non redihi leva rapa para fa casta corofro nofos sese care fronotho costo care fra baba tere delus sese fa care pronath yeah, the power of God, the power of God, the power of God, the power of God. So the woman nest that credit to Kadava repetes, Cecita Carif North or Coast, the Peve Vita, Levenon Stokoro Varefe Kele Calisto, Levenam Predeth or Husto Coro Fredefe, Cese Carif Rababa, the Galif Ronos, the Nom Beveta, Veda 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 Vara Paradusu, so the name Perefe his the Caravara Padas, the Carif Nasi. Yeah, 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 it'll come to pass, it'll come to pass. It'll come to pass. That which you're trusting God for. That which you're trusting God for. It'll come to pass. 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 Amen. Pepe paradisto coro vene manata stica vivita. Lesso non vodo paparafe custo coro. Levera predosto coro frenefi. Kistava. 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 Kistava lupa peretho kosto koron frenethes, sese kere fredatho kosta kare vere paras, sese kere vere 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 vete kuso, kare fronosto mongre della peperatha kosto koron frababa, henenengas de kare frababa, also tukos 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 takas teke begas teke lufa dema, menanisi, 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 teve neba paradofa husu. So so for papa para deva tisi hita deva 
Levanou para parar, que este carefe não foi que este para beba. Lavanete este carefe não foi que este carefe baba. Levanou este carefe não foi que este carefe vara petis. Se se vera paga o carefe não sou. Este carefe não está para parar que está. Levanou este carefe não foi que este carefe deva. La la ligou este carefe mava. Levanou este carefe naste carefe deva. Se su se veca para parar vero e vice coto. Que le vene manga leste care frabava tene da la pa. Amen. Isha fa fa feta pa gale frunoste. Ve 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 ta hese feta badis. So so koro voro mongo do te hese heta baba. E le vere parofo sto koro frunatis. Se se care vanoto ste ke veta tisi. E vena manata has te care vara paga so koro frunati. Se se peke tile para vara hasa. Yeah. Sometimes it comes as a burden. It comes as a burden in prayer. Yeah. Pray it out and pray it through. Pray it out. Pray out the burden. Pray out the plan. Pray out. Pray out. Pray it 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 into being. Pray it into existence. Pray it into manifestation. Amen. The place of prayer is the place of birthing. Birthing. Things of the spirit are birthed, birthed, birthed in prayer. So pray it out, pray it out, pray it out. Yeah, the direction, pray it out, the clarity, the steps to take, the timing, everything. Pray it out, pray it out, pray it out. And you will know, you will be sure-footed. You will say, yeah, I heard from God. I know what God wants me to do. I'm not guessing, I'm not trying. I know because I heard on the inside of me. Amen. And you'll be glad that you did. Praise God. Glory to God. Papa Papa Tisha Kutu Koro Vene Megasite Kerevara Sese Foro Mongra Deles De Foro Frababa Levan Ampra Deste Koro Frababa Theka Liste Namana Pisa Levan Rapa Pada Dava Sese Foro Pa Levan Osto Koro Fro Dafa Kosta Kere Diva Sese Kere Framava Sese Kufa Kete Pa I'll say something as I begin to round off. God is strong about the local church. Are you listening to me? He's very particular about the local church. And there's something about his order in the local church. You see, the Bible says the people were scattered abroad as sheep without a shepherd. He didn't say as sheep without a teacher. He didn't say as sheep without an evangelist. He didn't say as sheep without a prophet. He didn't say as sheep without an apostle. He said as sheep without a shepherd. There's something about your pastor. And there's something about being, in, being under authority. And just submitting to the leadership in the house. Amen. It has a way of sorting things out in people's lives. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Church. Yes, the word of God is taught. But there's something about just being under that authority. And under that grace. There's something it does for you. Having a pastor over you. You know, some people can be a part of an assembly. But their hearts are not really there. And some people... They are not really submitted like they should. Don't do that. A grace you don't honor won't work for you. A grace you don't honor won't work for you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah. Another turn. Another turn. Another turn. Like another turn. Another turn. Another turn. It's of God. And it will be fine. It'll work well. It'll, it'll work well. Amen. Take the turn. I don't know what that turn might be. I don't know what it is. But take that turn. Whatever that turn is, I don't know what it is. But it's of God. And it'll work fine. It may mean making a change about something. It may mean doing something a little different. I don't know what it is. But make that turn. It's of God. It'll be fine. It'll work well. And it'll bring growth. It'll bring increase. Amen. Amen. I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, make the turn. Make the turn. Amen. He is a good God. He is a good God. We reverence his presence. 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 The Holy Spirit of God. The one who indwells us. The one who lives on the inside of us. We reverence you, Spirit of God. Move among the people as you so desire. Talk to our hearts like you want. 
Move upon us. Thank you, Father. 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 You are not lost. You are not lost. You are not lost. You are not lost. You made a mistake. And then the devil has been telling you, you are lost. You are lost. You've committed the unpardonable sin. You'll never be forgiven. You are lost. You are done for. That's the end. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. You are not lost. You are not lost. You are not lost. He's your father. He forgave you. He can't even remember what happened. Amen. So stop letting the devil harass you with his condemnation. It's washed by the blood. Amen. And go forth in boldness. Go forth in boldness. He is a good God. He is a good God. Who's the person that has this stomach ulcer? Who's the person with this? Put your hand there. In the name of Jesus. Ulcer, be healed. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Let's just lift our hands to him. Amen. He's not done. He's still moving. Talking to people. Amen. You know, sometimes God calls us to a place of greater fellowship with him. A place of closer fellowship with him. You see, what we get out of God. Hmm? Yes, Jesus paid the price. We don't have to pay that price. But God said, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. How close your fellowship is with God. You are the one who determines. And let me tell you something. It doesn't cost to serve God. It pays off. It pays off. There are times it may look like it's costing you something to obey God. There are times it may look like, is it worth it? There are times it may look like, oh God, should I do this? Oh, you know it's God. Do it. Sell out to God. Nobody ever served God and regretted it. Nobody ever walked with God and regretted it. Don't say, yeah, I'll do this later. Oh, let me get this other degree. And there's nothing wrong with having degrees. But if there's something God is telling you to do, go ahead and do it. Amen. 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 Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, the supernatural is going to walk through you in a stronger way. In a stronger way. Amen. In a stronger way. Utterance in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Utterance in the Holy Ghost. And then you see, sometimes we say, but is it not just this utterance, this inspired utterance? But I wanted to get into the power gifts. I wanted to see the revelation gifts. Why is it just this utterance? Stay with that utterance. Stay with that utterance. As you stay with it and stay with it, it's going to spring you forth into the power gifts and into the revelation gifts. Just exercise yourself in it more. Amen. And sometimes as you speak, you speak out the secrets of men's hearts. Amen. You speak out things by the Spirit of God. So just keep at it and persist. Amen. You see, when we stay faithful with what God has given us, it gives us more. Amen. So just keep at it. And you're going to watch him increase you. Now there's something else that I can see. It's a few years in the future. It'll happen too. Amen. Yeah, you go there. It will happen. Hmm? It will happen. Eh? It will happen. Right? It will happen. Just relax and be at rest. It will happen. It will happen. Amen. It will happen. It's all in his hands. He'll bring it to pass. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift our hands to him. Just consecrate yourself and dedicate yourself to his plans, to his purposes. Whatever you want me to do, oh Lord. Wherever you want me to go. Wherever you want me to go. Now I see a multitude. I see a multitude of people coming to Jesus. Coming to Jesus. See, God is going to use this assembly to reach the lost. To reach some people that people consider outcasts. Don't draw back from it. Don't draw back from people thinking, but this is not usual. Yes, it's not. 
but it's what God has placed on your heart. I see multitudes, multitudes coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus. That's the most important thing. That's the Father's business. I must be about it. How about us just lifting our hands to him and giving him thanks?